Hey everyone, we are moving on to lipids, uh, our second class of macromolecules that we are learning about. And the important thing to know about lipids is that they are hydrophobic, right? And you'll remember this word that we talked about it before. Phobic comes from the word root for uh, dislike, right? And hydro comes from the word root for water. And so we're talking here about uh, molecules that have a low affinity or attraction for water, right? So they don't mix with water very well. So we're going to be talking about oils, we're going to talk about waxes, uh, we'll also be talking about um, uh, lipids that you might know in, as a solid form at room temperature, like butter for example, right? And we'll talk about the different types of lipids that there are. So the first thing to know about lipids is that they are not polymers in the same way that carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids are. They do have parts that make them up, um, but they are not the same uh, polymer made up of monomers uh, like we see in the other macromolecules. The other thing to know about them is that they are nonpolar and they are covalent, which could be expected because they're made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, and so that, that is why they are hydrophobic. Um, they do not dissolve in water. Examples of lipids are fats. Uh, other lipids that we'll learn about are phospholipids. Those are really important for membranes. We'll also learn about steroids, uh, which are a particular type of lipid that are important for um, regulating body functions. Uh, in general, fats, one particular type of lipid, are really useful to animals because they store um, energy in adipose tissue, and that is useful for um, long-term energy for the animal, as well as for insulating uh, the organs in the body. So in a lot of marine animals, we see uh, them using fat as a form of regulating their body temperature. Moving along, let's talk about fats. So these are a type of lipids. Um, fat is a special molecule, like I just said, uh, that are used for long-term energy storage. And fats have a particular structure, right? Fats are made out of a glycerol component and also a fatty acid. Uh, and here, this particular type of fat, fat molecule that we have um, is a triglyceride, and it has the glycerol component on this side, and then this is the fatty acid tail. And this particular type of fat is made out of three sets of these components, and that's why we refer to it as a triglyceride. Um, when we talk about fats, there are two important types of fats that you need to know about. You need to know about saturated fats, and you need to know about unsaturated fats. The difference between those words is that prefix. Um, so when we talk about saturated fats, um, the first thing that you need to remember about the word saturated is that it's referring to something that is at its maximum, right? When you, so you are saturated with work to do, you have no more work that you can do. Um, you have too much to do. Uh, if you have a sponge that is saturated with water, then it's full of water, right? So saturated is a word for kind of like full, or you can't take on any more. And when we talk about saturated fats, we're actually referring to the number of hydrogen atoms that are part of the molecule. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. Um, but just to reinforce the opposite, if it's unsaturated, then it's not at the maximum. It's not full. <clears throat> and so when we talk about saturated fats, we are actually talking about whether there is a double bond in our molecule. So let's take a look at an example of a saturated fat, and that should make it clearer. Um, here we have a diagram of a saturated fat. And I'm just gonna, um, this saturated fat here is the same one that we saw up here, but instead of drawing out all the carbons and the hydrogens, um, and a shorthand notation is that um, at every point on the line where there's a bend, you know that there's a carbon atom there. So here we have um, a carbon atom that's attached, double bounded to an oxygen, and then here at this bend right here, there's another carbon atom that has a hydrogen and a hydrogen. Here's another carbon atom that has a hydrogen and a hydrogen, right? And so this kind of zigzag is simply representing carbons 
that have hydrogens attached to them so that there are this is kind of hard to do, um, so that there are uh, four bonds around each carbon atom and it kind of continues right so if I were to draw it out like this maybe this will make it clear um, Right. If I wanted to draw this in shorthand notation, I would have one carbon here, another carbon there, carbon, carbon, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, and each of those carbons has a hydrogen around it. Okay. So these lines all represent a single bond between the carbon atoms. And as you can see here in this diagram, there's no double bonds on these carbon-hydrogen chains here. They're just carbon-hydrogen, carbon-hydrogen, no double bonds. There are double bonds on the oxygens, but that's not what we're talking about, right? So these carbons um, have the maximum amount of hydrogens they could have around them, right? They are saturated with hydrogens. You couldn't fit more hydrogens in there, okay? Um, and saturated fats, something that you should remember about them is that they are typically solid at room temperature and I'll explain more about that why so like butter for example even if you leave it out on the table all day unless it's a really hot day it's probably gonna stay as a solid right so butter is an example of a saturated fat because it is solid at room temperature okay um, <clears throat> let's talk about unsaturated fats so unsaturated fats are very similar to saturated fats, except that they have a double bond or more, right? So here in this diagram, we have a carbon, we have a carbon, so carbon attached to another carbon, and then there's a double bond, and then there's a carbon, and there's a carbon, and it keeps going kind of in both directions, right? So this carbon around it has the regular amount of the two hydrogens attached to it and then it's attached to the two carbons around it. But then these two carbons, right, the number of bonds that carbon can have is four, right? Four, carbon's looking for four bonds around it. So each of these carbons only has one hydrogen. Okay? And so, in theory, it's not the case here, but theoretically, if there was no double bond here, there could be two more hydrogens that could be fit into this molecule. But they're not because there's a double bond. But there could be, yeah? And that's what this whole idea of unsaturated is referring to. It's saying that there could, if there wasn't any double bonds between the carbons, be more hydrogens. And what's important about unsaturated fats is that because of these double bonds and because of the way that they end up arranging themselves, these double bonds oftentimes or always cause, um, instead of the chain to kind of have this nice straight line to it, they make these bends in the chain, right? We see this here. The chain isn't a straight chain like these two above it, but it's bent. And that has to do specifically with the double bond here. That's not an accident of drawing. Those bends um, what happens, it makes those, those, those molecules suddenly kind of um, bulkier. It's harder for, I'm not doing a great job drawing this, but <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is that they're bent. Um, these are representations of our uh, fatty acids, right? And those fatty acids suddenly, because of these bends, they can't, they can't lay as close to one another. They can't stick as easily on top of one another. And that decreases the intermolecular forces between the molecules. And as a result of that, unsaturated fats typically are liquids at room temperature, right? And that has to do with the fact that these intermolecular forces between the lipid molecules are not as strong, and so that's why we see them as a liquid. In the case of our uh, saturated fats, oops, in the case of the saturated fats, because these chains are nice straight chains, you can have them lay very close to one another, 
and that makes the intermolecular forces stronger, and that's why they end up being a solid at room temperature, okay? Um, you've probably heard of trans fats, and trans fats are a little bit different, and I don't think we're going to get into them, but trans fats um, are like unsaturated fats, but there's something special about their double bond so that they have straight chains and they can lay on top of each other. Um, and so trans fats are solid at room temperature, even though they are unsaturated. Um, but uh, we're not really going to get into that here. So um, moving on, another type of lipid is a phospholipid. Um, and a phospholipid uh, is a type of lipid that's involved in membranes, in cell membranes. And phospholipids are made out of two fatty acid chains and then they have a phosphate group, okay? And so we have this represented here. Um, we have our, uh, there's also a glycerol. Um, so we have our phosphate, then there's the glycerol, and then there's one fatty acid chain, and here's another fatty acid chain, okay? And so what we find is that the fatty acid chain is hydrophobic, and the phosphate part of the um, phospholipid is hydrophilic. And that means that it has a relatively high affinity um, for water. So I'm going to put like a smiley face water, sad face water, don't like water. Okay, and oftentimes we talk about the phosphate as the head. So we say the phosphate head and the, uh, the lipid tail. Um, and what's cool about these is when you get a bunch of them together, they arrange themselves in this really interesting sort of way that is exactly the reason why cell membranes work the way that they do. So if you take phospholipids and you have them in water, they arrange themselves in this interesting kind of like bilayer, right? So you have the tails on the inside and then you have like the phosphate heads on the top, right? So here we have the, the lipid tails on the inside, and there's two layers, right? It's a bilayer. There's a top layer and there's a bottom layer. Each of them have a layer with phosphates and lipids, and then phosphates and lipids. And they arrange themselves so the hydrophobic tails are on the inside of the membrane, and the hydro. Sorry about my handwriting today. <laughs> the hydrophilic heads are on the outside, right? Because in cells, you'll remember that most most of the cells are water, right? They're water on the inside, they're water on the outside. There's no like air like bubbles, um, and if they are, they're small. Uh, the majority of anything that's happening in a living organism is in water, right? And so we have this special space in between in the membranes um, that kind of is there's less water. There's no water there, right? It's repelling the water and it's forming this layer. And because of these hydrophilic and hydrophobic interactions with water, the cell membranes are actually very strong. They function well, they hold the cell together. They can be broken and they can reform and it's a sort of like a fluid membrane that, you know, if one part of it uh, breaks and it will like reform again. But it's these hydrophobic and hydrophilic forces that hold it together, that hold everything together. And if you take a moment and think about that, I don't know about you, but it blows my mind every time, right? So this is really important to know about cell membranes. So when you have your cell, then it has these, this, these two layers, right? And that's why we call these, the, the membrane oftentimes a phospholipid bilayer, right? By referring to two. And, um, and so that's how we have our cells held together, okay? Really awesome and amazing. <clears throat> Onward, we have steroids. Steroids are another type of lipids, right? Another different type of lipid. And um, they are a particular type of lipid that has carbon rings, in particular four carbon rings. And um, they are, um, and one type of steroid is cholesterol and it's really important in the cell membranes. It gives the cell membranes kind of like structure and support. Uh, you've probably heard of cholesterol, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, right? Um, but you definitely need some cholesterol for your cell membranes. Too much of it is not good. Steroid hormones um, 
are really important for regulating, regulating body function. So some steroid hormones, which you have probably heard of, include um, estrogen or estradiol and testosterone. Both of those are types of steroid hormones. And you'll notice they all have this kind of same shape where they have these three hexagonal rings and then a pentagon, right? So there's four carbon rings. Because remember, these rings are carbon, 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 right? Every bend in this line is a carbon. So you might even be looking at this and been thinking, wait, hold on. Estrogen, when I think of estrogen, I think of women, right? And when I think of testosterone, I think of man, right? Because estrogen is known for um, causing secondary uh, sexual characteristics in females, right? It's a really important hormone for females, although males have some too. Um, and testosterone is aff affiliated with um, sexual characteristics of males, right? Although females have it as well. Um, and you look at these two, and they're not that different, right? There is not that much of a difference between these two molecules. And that's really interesting, and we'll learn more about that later. However, um, they are both different types of lipids, and specifically steroid um, steroids. So, moving on, let's do a practice question. Um, so, which of the following statements uh, concerning saturated fats is not true? So take a moment and read through it, choose your answer, and then uh, check if you get the same one as me. Hopefully pause the video, chose an answer. I'm going to go through them now. Uh, so I'm going to start at the bottom. Uh, so saturated fats, um, are they one of the factors that contribute to atherosclerosis? Yes, they are. Saturated fats are affiliated with heart disease and all sorts of health problems, and doctors will recommend for people to keep a low saturated fat diet. Saturated fats are found in red meat in high qualities, that quantities. That's why um, doctors don't recommend eating that. They're found in cheese and butter and uh, a lot of baked goods, right? So you, when you see a nutrition label, I don't think I have in here, um, then look for the saturated fat and try to keep that low. Unless it's saturated fat that's coming from vegetables and then slightly less unhealthy. Uh, so, saturated fats, do they contain more hydrogen than unsaturated fats uh, with the same, if both of them have the same number of carbon atoms? And the, um, that is true, right? Saturated fats have as much hydrogen as possibly could fit around your given carbon molecules, right? There's no double bonds between them. If we have three carbons, then they have as many hydrogens as you could possibly fit around those carbons. So that also is true. Um, saturated fats, generally solid at room temperature. Remember, saturated, solid. They both start with S. That helps me remember it. Okay. Um, do they have multiple double bonds in their fatty acid chains? No, they have no double bonds. So that is our answer. Um, and just for the sake of going over the last one, because you should always go through all your options when you do multiple choice, um, saturated fats are definitely more common in animals than they are in plants. They are the way that animals store their fat. And that's also why when you consume animal meat, um, it will have more saturated fat than if you eat a uh, vegetable or a plant. Okay? That's all I wanted to talk about for lipids. Um, next video is proteins.